All right. I believe we are live. Let me just catch up on the chat, make sure we are live. Hello, Dosi. Hello, Radu. Radu, let me catch up on your messages here. Don't want to be rude. Uh, no, Radu, no, no. I would, I would prefer that you didn't. Hi, Vizbot. All right, let's get the ball rolling. Your friends call you Doc. All right, well, then I'll uh, hopefully be able to call you Doc as well. As we begin tonight's Rage Forest. How is everyone doing? Let's take a look at the teams. We're, we're going to start with a uh, bit of a uh, celebrity game here. We've got the Viper, Mr. Yo, ACCM, a few other players. Let's uh, go around the map, see what we're working with. We've got Mr. Yo playing as the Berbers. Hopefully Chris is here and is able to catch Mr. Yo playing as the Berbers. Two <laughs> overhead camshaft. <laughs> All right, Hera. Playing as the Poles in blue. DK2 as the Sicilians in green. And Lix as the Portuguese in teal. Let me know how the sound is, how everything's looking. ACCM on the other side of the map is playing as the Cumans. Rooney as the Persians in orange. In the other pocket, the Viper as the Slavs. And last but not least, say my name is the Italians. So we've got the Italians facing off against the Berbers. Will be interesting to see how uh, how the Mounted Civilization does against the Genoese crossbow if we're lucky enough to see that. Yeah, Vizbot, I'm expecting this to either be a very long game or a very short game based on the uh, <laughs> based on the players. Today we are doing Rage Forest. And my mouse is uh, slowing down a little bit. I don't like that. Maybe I have to change the battery at some point. Then we've got on the other side of the map the Portuguese. Taking on the Cumans. Ooh, okay. Not too sure what to make of this meant to make of that matchup. The map. Well, the map is pretty damn ugly. On the left side, we've got a north-south avenue of attack, a bit of a diagonal corridor. Where purple is chasing Mr. Yo here. Oh. Bit of a scuffle. Let's see what happens here. HP looks like it's dropping. And unfortunately, no Celts. We do have slabs with decent siege Sicilians. We got a we got a couple of good siege civilizations. On the right side of the map, also a north-south quarter and another diagonal, and then whatever the hell you want to call this H chair-shaped pattern of alleys. We've got a few lakes, very annoying. I think you can still place a dock here in fishing ships, if I'm not mistaken, or, or a dock here in fishing ships around it. Not too sure. We'll have to wait and see how the game shakes out. Ooh, let's let's go. We've got our first boar pull. Only three. Villagers already taken a little bit of damage. Virgilio, I wanted to cast that game. You, you mean the um, the Gamer Legion matchup versus the uh, the clan formerly known as Aftermath. I wanted to do it, but everyone casted that uh, that matchup. So I felt like, I don't know. <laughs> if everyone else is doing it, who's going to want to watch me when you've got all these other veteran casters? Mem was doing it, T90, Dave, all these guys. Yeah, Radu, I would, I would prefer not. I appreciate that, Doc. Maybe I will. I mean, look, it was a pretty momentous event. The uh, dis dissolution of a clan. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's a it's a momentous event. Maybe I still will, but the, I, again, I feel like it's... I, I really did want to, but when there's uh, 20 other channels that are covering the exact same thing... By the way, what is going on here? Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 the villager. Oh, by the skin of her teeth. Survives. 
when 20 other channels and casters are, are doing it, I, I feel a little like, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not, uh, not as uh, interested in doing it, but uh, maybe that's a, the not a right way of looking at things. Who knows? <laughs> Who is the 90? I don't know. I guess he's the 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 other 89 T's didn't make it. So T90 is the. Uh... I get the T. I think his name is Tristan, right? Why why the 90? Has he ever explained why the 90? I don't think I've ever heard of an explanation. As the players continue, let's see if anyone's sneaking anything behind enemy lines. Looks like orange. Okay, orange is sneaking two sheep behind enemy lines. So nothing in the south side of the map. Nothing in the north side of the map. Okay, so fairly clean game. Oh, he's born in 1990. Oh, was he? T90's for the younger audience, is he? Oh, damn. F you to this one particular wolf. This is a big hunting squad. Are they going after six boar? What is going on here? What is Mr. Yo doing? <laughs> what the hell is this? I guess when your villagers move 5% faster in the Dark Age, I, I guess this is the kind of stuff you do. This is a long way to send this many villagers. That is a lot of idle time. Oh, Radu, yeah. Radu, I'm not... I, I haven't been as active this week on Discord. It's very week by week for me. I do apologize if you sent me a, a message there and I didn't catch it. I, I am sorry. Salam. Let's follow Rooney as he pulls. I still have no clue what the hell Mysterio was doing here. Oh, he's gonna build a mill. That's why. Okay. Why the hell did he attack the boar first? Okay, he may, maybe didn't have enough wood. That's the only reason I can think of that he attacked the boar first. His Twitch chat is abrasive. <laughs> he was complaining about turning 30. Well, that makes us mortal enemies. I wish I was turning 30. 42 this year isn't bad either. Appar apparently it's the meaning of life is 42. So we'll see if... Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy knew what the hell they were talking about. So, Mr. Yo is going to get, by the way, six boars is what, like 2,000 food? A little over 2,000 food here for our Berber. So he's uh, going to hit Castle pretty damn fast. Looks like Hera has a scout with two HP on it. Okay, so ACCM has managed to sneak in a few villagers, but immediately our Portuguese and Teal catches them and responds and what is the viper doing oh it looks like the viper lost the villager no not to the wolf never mind he he penned the wolf tamed it but where's his villager this is a bit of like this is like a uh horror movie you stumble upon a cabin in the woods there's a tame wolf what's the viper up to he is going up to Castle. He's going to be the first one on his team to go up to Castle. Unfortunately for him, both Teal and Blue, Hera and Lix are already en route and will hit it first. Well, actually, Lix won't. Hera, uh, Hera of course, will hit it first. Completely un unabused pocket position. Oh, another wolf joins in. Sorry, guys. Let me catch up with uh, with the chat. Yeah, Vizbot, you called it. I was a little confused there. I, I didn't. I thought maybe he misclicked. I appreciate that, Radu. I think T90 is. Uh, he's back to live streaming now, right? With community games, which we'll have uh, at some point as well. Like I said, I've been uh, sorely slacking on the Discord side of things. Okay, we've got a bit of a Cuban Tower push here. How many villagers inside of you? Four? 
But the wall off with stone is already here. Where the hell is you, are these villagers going? You might want to back away. Over here. Did Hera lose his scout? Yeah, he lost his scout to what? Okay, well, we're approaching more and more players hitting Castle Age, which means siege workshops, which means mangonels, which means wall offs don't really matter anymore. Our cumin, it looks like, opted for the two town center cumin play in feudal. What does he have on his pocket here? What is our Persian doing? Our Persian is in Castle Age. So, two players on each team are in Castle. Hera's gone up to three town centers. I'm expecting Schlachta out of our pole? Maybe? Portuguese Castle's going up. There's that siege workshop to try to get rid of those towers. Mysterio looks like he's almost done depopulating the boar population. <laughs> Oh, nice, Radu. I hope he likes it. Oh, Doc, that's nice. I appreciate that. I mean, I, I don't want to take any, any viewers away from any other caster. But I do appreciate it. I'm, I'm quite interested in what our pole is going to do, and I'm quite interested in what our Berber is going to do, because like I said, these are two mounted civilizations. And right directly north of them in purple, uh, although he is still in Feudal Age, which is concerning, you have the Italian with access to Genoese crossbow. Now, the one thing that's good for our Italian, which uh, I don't think he's going to die any anytime soon, is that he's got the Viper in his pocket. Now, the only thing with the Viper is he does sometimes like to take his time to get an army up. So we'll see if he comes in time to save purple. By the way, I didn't notice that uh, Mr. Yo, the dock that he took here with that one villager that survived the wolf attack, is on the other side of the map. It's actually on Team North's side of the map. And that villager is still alive and she's still building wall offs here as our Italian is trying to bust his way in. One cumin tower down. Okay, you're attacking them with uh, organ guns. I don't think they come with any attack bonus against buildings. I think, I think when they're elite, they get a plus one attack bonus against buildings. Hmm. Yeah, Virgilio, that's what I'm thinking. He's going to spam with Schlachta. But then again, like I said, you have the Italians with Genoese crossbow that'll absolutely wreck anything on a horse or anything on a camel. All right, best of luck, man. And now the Viper is here. He wants to bust into here. They, they have no clue, by the way. Sorry, what am I doing? They have no clue what's here. They just know it's been walled off. Oh, but you got to be careful. You don't want to attack your own, your own teammates' units, which is why the Viper is attacking the extreme edges of the wall. And now Say My Name Our Italian is clicking up to the next age. Unfortunately, he's still two minutes away. John Yang is here. Game number one. How's it going, John? How are the uh, violin shorts? Abdullah, I really want to see Sicilian sergeants taking on the Italian condo. Ooh, uh, unfortunately, the Sicilian's all the way down here. And the Italian's all the way here. Although that would be a pretty fun matchup. You think Italian's going fast, Imp? Let's take a look at uh, the... Off of 39 <laughs> villagers, maybe. I mean, he's got 400 gold, 300 food. He's got the Viper defending him. Oh, annoying, annoying Berber Mangonel here. Let's see what's going on around the map. I still have no idea what Hera's game plan is. I mean, he's heading up to Imperial. He's heading up to Imperial just as our Italian is hitting Castle. Our Italian doesn't have any stone. 
So as much as I want to, I've been talking about Genoese crossbows. I don't expect to see them anytime soon. Weather is great. Ooh, a one hour essay on how to play a value. Very, <laughs> literally the, uh, the negative inverse of a short would be a one hour exposition. Although anything, anything, uh, composed by Bach is not exactly the shortest of pieces. Yeah, it looks like the Portuguese is fast imping. It looks like Hera's imping. It looks like our Cuman is imping as well. I don't know about our Italian. He's got 900 gold. Maybe he is relying. I mean, for now, Mr. Yo is not really pressing the issue. Camel archers are not going to take down structures quickly at all. Sorry, guys. Let me catch up with the chat. Bad system. Thank you for streaming such joy. Is that a Mary Kondo, Kondo uh, reference? Because I would never throw out Age of Empires. It gives me much joy. Hi, Catherine. Oh, Radu, that's uh, way too generous. Yeah, Hera must be going Schlachta. All right, John, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> I appreciate that, Catherine. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Doc, for spreading the good word. You're like a... Uh, I'm trying to see if there's a monk on the field. You're like this guy, Doc. You're going around spreading the good word of cast of empires. Oh, our Sicilian is pivoting to the right, so Abdullah, I don't think we're going to get to see him go left and take on the Italian anytime soon, but we'll see if someone else trains Condottieri. So Hera is going Cavalier. I didn't catch if he got Schlachta. We got a whole bunch of infrastructure here, so, you know, shit's hitting the fan. Let's take a look at what's going on around the map. Mysterio is still safe here. Does he still have the villager, by the way? Yeah, he still has the villager. Where is she? Oh, she's right here. Mysterio's being so annoying, making himself at home here. Our Italian, I mean, <laughs> whether you want to call it fast imp or not, he is going up to Imperial. Doesn't have enough stone yet for a castle. The Viper, our slab, is going barracks. So I'm assuming we're going to get to see some Druzhina trample damage infantry out of him. We'll see how well they fare against Hera's spam of cavaliers and Mysterio's Camel archers. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Some petards are on their way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well, even if you were building that, it's not even complete and Hera's busted in. Let's take a very quick look at what's going on here. Kipchaks, of all things. Okay, don't see them every day. Kipchaks are taking out villagers, but these guys are probably just bait so that the organ guns can take out the Kipchaks. But let's see what Hera decides to do here. Hera and Mr. Yo. On the warpath, the Viper, 36 seconds away from Halberdier. Purple is abandoning ship. Oh, I had such high hopes for Purple. The last remaining anti-cavalry force that could take on the Berbers and the Camel Archers. Okay. But even Hera's going to have to get the hell out of here. I don't think uh, Cavaliers, cheap as they are, are going to be able to take on Halberdiers. So Purple's a little safe. And look at that. He can manage to convert a uh, Polish Cavalier. Okay. Not terrible. Not terrible. Doc, you just woke up. Is it impolite to ask where you are that you just woke up? I appreciate that, Radu. Bizbot, let's take a look at that fish boom. <laughs> okay. Not exactly the uh not exactly the boomiest of booms. Hera, by the way, has managed to sneak in a whole bunch of cavaliers into the back of the Viper's base. But they are going to die very quickly here, especially now that there's some Persian camels who take one look at the cavaliers and turn around.
Australia, nice. I have yet to meet an Aussie I never, I, I didn't like. Yep, uh, Abdullah, purple is incredibly lucky. I, that's what I said. He's able to take a little bit of a break, is purple. We're not going to judge him too harshly because he does have the Viper in his pocket. Hera keeps engaging into these halberdiers. Do they have Drujina yet? No, they don't. We're getting Savars out of our Persian. Oh, so we're quickly getting some pretty cool technologies. We're also getting uh, Onager out of the Viper. Remember, Slavic Siege units are 15% cheaper than normal. 2 a.m. in the Netherlands. Oh, damn. Uh, that's like uh, just when, when the party's just getting started in uh, the Netherlands, no? Okay. Players disengage in the West. Let's take a look at what's going on. That's a lot of Kipchaks. Still a minute and a half away from Savars. What's your attack bonus against Spearman? Only plus one at the moment. <laughs> Can a Linux play Age of Empires? We're in a museum. Does, Li does do Linux computers still exist? Or am I am I showing my Microsoft bias here? What are you? You are a silly, silly Portuguese cavalier that thought it could take on a couple of camels. Ooh, half drunk from the bar is the best way to watch Age of Empires. I, I used to I used to watch a lot of Age of Empires and StarCraft videos have drunk from the bar. <laughs> Ooh, come on, let's see it. Oh, the Viper gets a good shot with his Onagers. He's, by the way, going up to Siege Onagers, so Hera's going to have to be very careful. Viper is pinging over here, probably wants some markets rebuilt. Monsieur building a very backwards castle. Tell me our Italian is building Genoese crossbows for the love of Age of Empires. No, he's not. Elite Camel Archer for you. Elite Kipchak for you. So we've got a couple of stalemates. Kipchak just... I think they can take on some cannonballs. Hera's broken in yet again into Team North's territory, but... The Savars are here in their armor. Fully armored. Eight freaking Pierce armor. Seven, me six melee. And they are going straight for the camel archers. I don't know if they really should be. Probably want to go after the villagers first. Man, the Savars. Can they take an absolute beating? But eventually numbers do prevail. Monsieur inserts himself into a bit of a choke point. And Hera yet again is dislodged from his attempt to penetrate the north. And yet again, our Sicilian is uh, not doing much. Oh, that's so sour. Your castle is halfway up. Is he bringing any more villagers forward, Hera? No. <laughs> oh, the camel archers are not paying attention. Well, he paid attention enough to get one onager, I guess. Yeah, StarCraft 2 is pretty nice. Hey Z, nice to see you again. Uh, Virgilio, no, the camel archers don't get bonus against the uh, Savars. Their bonus is only against cavalry archers. As you can see, they're plus six. Everything else is a big fat zero. Oh, the Viper loses. He's losing so many onagers. But. His halberd ears have closed. Do they finally have Drujina? Uh, if I could only freaking click on a unit. No, I <laughs> clicked and he died. Where are, where are the Viper's halberd ears? No, still no trample damage. And finally, our Sicilian is moving forward. We wanted to see sergeants and said we're seeing halberd ears. Oh, did he, Radu? I, again, I have, to, I have to be a bit more active on Discord. The 
<laughs> Virginia. That's funny. Always get to know the bonuses of the units. I mean, the trample damage Drusian is, I think this is like the second most expensive upgrade in the game. So I'm not surprised he hasn't gotten it yet. Era, by the way, is now bringing his gunpowder citadels for our Persian. Why? Where are your castles? Okay, our Persian is so rich, he's not exactly under attack, but... Doesn't need to be. He's bringing forward a castle and his Savars have busted into Hera's base. Uh-oh. How many villager kills do they have at this point? 30... 29 dead Polish villagers, and that number is climbing. Is this game written in rust? That is very poetic and grim. Yeah, Tazy, tell me about it. I wish I could live stream every night. But unfortunately, the little one. Now Gray is pinging over here. Has Hera cleaned this up or is Hera just down? Hera's been knocked down to 73 villagers. Hera's got the lowest villager count in the game because he is pushing up north. He's pushing into Halberd ears. Oh, oh no. That's why I said I really was curious as to what our poll would do. One Genoese crossbow. For our Italian, come on! Start pumping out those Ninja Turtles. Heisen, yes, this game was played, I think, like three days ago. Oh my goodness, Sicilian Siege. Portuguese gunpowder. The Kipchak is gonna absolutely do jack shit against that. Oh my goodness, anything that pops out just dies immediately. Where the hell is our Persian? Our Persian is trying to kill Hera at the source. And now it's Hera's turn to re return the favor of try. Oh my god, oh my god, 99! It goes up. And it goes up in the trade route. That is so sour. That is incredibly sour. Green just killed his own onagers? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Let's take a look at the friendly fire rate here. 19 kills. Okay, only two friendly fires. Not bad. Myra, nice to see you. And thank you so much for the compliment. I mean, Hera's economy is back up to 99 villagers. Now it's over 100. He still has his gunpowder here. Got a few lumberjacks over here, but let's see how he's dealing with this Persian incursion. I did not mean for that to rhyme. What is Hera's gold like? Oh, even with 120 gold, I don't know that you can necessarily keep pumping out cavaliers. I think Hera was a little too cocky here with his wall off of two houses. I think he uh, he thought he was a little bit safer than he is because now the Kipchaks are here as well. That being said, ACCM is dead. Silk Road, okay. So our Italian is helping the trade out a little bit. Uh, thank you so much, Catherine. I appreciate that. Do the Camel Archers fire faster than regular Camel Archers? I don't think so. I think they're both at a... I think they start at 2. And then if you have a thumb ring, it goes down to 1.7. Although, let's take a look at the kip check. 1.9. Okay, so actually, maybe. There you go. Yeah, Luca, he did get his uh, villager count back up to uh, a massive 110, which is not, uh, not bad at all. The problem is there's still this big fat... Persian castle with citadels. That's interesting, Radu. So ACCM is dead over here. No, well, there you go. So we knew it was either going to be a short-ish game. 49 minutes isn't the longest of games. Or it was going to last like two hours. Yeah, the Kipchak arrow fire is super cool. It is basically a chukanu on a horse.
Although it attacks <laughs> at half of the Chukanu. What's a Chukanu with uh, rocketry 14? This guy attacks on an 8. But I think his arrows also do melee damage. So it's like pretty damn good against rams. But that was that was a, a bit of an interesting game. Holy shit, Mr. Yo, baby sat his camel archers 123 kills on only 28 of them. Wow, okay. Not bad at all, not bad at all. But I think with ACCM collapsing here, I think Rooney, our Persian, was trying to be a little bit too clever here and try to uh, go at Hera at the source. And because of that, his teammate literally got 2v1'd and donezo. <laughs> Yeah, ACCM and the, and the Italian was a non-entity. This was basically a three-on-four the entire game. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. That was game number one played three days ago. Let's take a look at game number two. Okay, what do we have? Red, green, gray, and orange. We'll call you guys Team Northwest. Sorry, guys, you have to hear me uh, typing very slowly. Because my microphone is right in front of me. And we'll call you ta Team Southeast. All right, so let's take a look. Headlining Team Northwest all the way to the north, starting with Loom is the Mayans. The reason he's starting with Loom and not a villager because the Mayans start with an extra villager. And therefore, they start the game housed. So might as well just use that time to get uh, to get Loom. Britons and Mayans, two good archer civilizations. And by the way, Britons with Valis. So I'm expecting to see about a billion longbows. Odemeister as the Franks in the other pocket. And Richard as the Cumans. Franks and Cumans? No, that could be an interesting mix. Heavy Cavalry. Dr. Cosmonaut is the Sicilian, although that might be a nice thick wall. Ooh, Sicilians and Persians. <laughs> and Slam, a fellow Canuck. Dratek as the Saracens in purple. And last but not least, Rogi as the Vikings. Is it me or are these like some ridiculously good civs? These are some pretty damn good civilizations we have in this game. I, I have high hopes for this game. Let me catch up on... Uh, Richard, I, ooh, you just got back from vacation, do tell. I am jonesing for a vacation. Granny typing. <laughs> that way, why, is what I feel like. Oh, man. So we got the Mayans with their 50% wall discount taking on the Vikings. So you got cheap archers versus archers that come with a nice plus one. What's the name of the upgrade? Boggs, Boggs Vagar. Sounds like a dragon from Game of Thrones. Or you have 100 HP Eagles taking on regenerative berserkers. To the south, we've got Cumans taking on Sicilians. Oh, man. I don't know how well the Cumans are going to do. I think our Cumans going to have to add a, have, bring in some siege to deal with the Sicilian. Let's take a look at the map. We've got one avenue of attack to the south. The center is... Is it me or does this center forest look like the Thundercats logo? With the, with the nose and the mouth open and the top teeth, bottom teeth. Let, let's play Age of Empires Rorschach. What, what does this center forest look like to you? This one. To me, it looks like a, like, a, like a wolf head or a boar head. That's opening its maw to consume its prey. For now, though, nothing as exciting as that. We've got a bunch of villagers attacking each other. <laughs> Du Kang, nice to see you. I appreciate you joining. I appreciate you commenting. I hope is uh, you have a great weekend too, and this is uh, contributing a little bit. Virgilio, I don't know if the Cuman will 2TC boom if our Sicilian lets him. I mean, Do Cosmonaut can be aggressive. Uh, we've seen him be very aggressive. Yeah, Myra, tell me about it. When I saw, when I saw Mam uh, Saracens immediately goes to Mamluks, especially when on the other side of the map, you've got the Franks. And 
you've got the freaking humans, which are basically a cavalry civilization. Let's see how well Slam pulls these boars. Shane Vicker upgrade. What's Dollywood in Tennessee? I've never heard of Dollywood. Is that the uh, the music version of Hollywood? Is that what that is? A screaming pig, a Zelda Triforce. Hi, Quantum Thinker. A mutant rat pig crossbreed. <laughs> Rado, I'll let the chat uh, let you know if they think it's rude. Board train, exactly. Slam, by the way, has what I think is the record for board pulls. I think he once did like nine or 12 or something like that. What he did was he built three palisade gates, one, two vertical and one horizontal, and he just lured boar after boar after boar and left them in there. Uh, okay, our Viking is going to try to kill this villager, but... Actually, no, but never mind. She walls herself in nice and safe and secure behind a few trees. Dolly Parton's theme park. Wow, I, I didn't know Dolly Parton had a the, uh, theme park. I, I remember I saw a meme recently, like a few days ago, of Dolly Parton when she was younger. And uh, somebody wrote, if she looked like that, what the hell did Jolene look like? If you're familiar with the Jolene song about Don't Take My Man. Oh, Doc, that is not an easy thing to learn at all. Because one wrong step, and that boar is no longer harvestable. Speaking of harvestable, a lot of villager activity here underneath the Cuman Town Center. But the action seems to be all here in the center north part of the map. I mean, I can't get over how much this looks like a wolf's head to me. The ear, the eye... The nose, the teeth, the open mouth. But let's, uh, uh, I'm going to stop uh, going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> the wall, nice to see you. Glad you could join us. Chester, nice to see you too. Let's see. Our cumin, he is. Oh, God. I don't think our cumin's going to make it. Sorry to be a Debbie Downer. I don't think our cumin's going to make it. Ah. <laughs> it could be a, uh, a rat from Warhammer. I mean, if you haven't commented yet, what the hell does this look like to you? It looks like a rat. The nose. Anyway. I said I wouldn't go down the rabbit hole, and then I immediately, with literally within 60 seconds, went down the rabbit hole yet again. Looks like both players are trying to wall themselves out. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Cuban villager, but don't, don't worry too much. Richard has snuck in two more villagers behind enemy lines. And a dock in what is probably going to be the biggest waste of resources. Trying to lame the lake that already has a uh, fire galley on it. Heal in red? You're not on the same team either. So more dock try, <laughs> more dock laming here. Samero and Odmeister are trying to take control of this dock from Rogi, our Viking. Ooh, if only we were in a castle and we could start seeing some uh, longboats being trained. Our cumin has overstayed his welcome. Cosmonaut says, get the hell out of here. So a few minor scuffles erupting. Oh no, oh no. Green doesn't notice. Valus doesn't notice. <laughs> we'll see how much damage that really, really weak scout could do. He's in feudal, so I guess his attack does jump from a three to a five. So he, he does pack a little bit more of a punch. Oh no. Odmeister's not noticing that our Viking... How many kills does this guy have? Okay, so he killed all the fishing ships, but now he's facing a bigger threat. A Mayan fire galley. More and more players are hitting feudal. Cosmonaut the last just hit it. Now, where is the donjon? Where are the sergeants? 
He's training a galley. Am I missing something? Is there an enemy dock that's uh has a Klingon invisibility cloak on it? Oh, why is he training a galley here? Maybe he wants to reach the villager? Oh, look, look, he's trying to block the way with fishing ships. Ah, <laughs> I love it. We had a short like this when Ganji was doing this. I guess that's why he's training the galley. That's a, such a waste. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, he doesn't stop it. He doesn't stop it at all. But the galley comes out and the villager, down she goes. Will he cancel it? Will it die? It looks like our Frank is the first to hit Castle Age. No surprise there. Two town centers are being plopped down for him. Sorry guys, I'm trying to catch up with the chat. Heisen, it does look like an angry dog, right? That's what I thought, like a wolf's head or, or something, or a pig's head. Cosmonaut reclaims the land on which Richard tried to build his dock. Richard's, by the way, his incursion is done. A siege workshop being brought here to help by our Persian. Uh, dock, yes. Rage Forest is exactly like Black Forest, but I believe there's a more even distribution of lakes. So every team has X amount of lakes. In this case, it looks like one, two, three... One, two, three lakes a team. Well, we all appreciate it, Radu. That was fun to learn. Well, Myra, yeah, I mean, so some of them were very progressive uh, uh, until it came time to to sacrifice you to the rain gods. <laughs> Look at him trying to bust in. Did he make it all the way back here from attacking... From attacking the, uh, the, the fishing ships? By the way, he didn't kill a single one if this is the same scout. Okay. He didn't get any kills. Do these guys have any kills? No. So that might be the OG scout that was up there attacking Valus' fishing ships like an hour ago. Slam once. Ooh, that kind of looked like he got his own manganel, but didn't. Let's see here. Slam wants to get a little bit of damage done. He is moving out with some manganels at the same time. I mean, our cumin. He literally, you were right. He is literally everywhere. Vizbot, thanks so much for joining. Okay, there we go. A castle up for our Britain. Like I said, I want to see about a billion longbows out of uh, Valis. These are unsupported, so Slam needs to be a little bit careful here. Two Mayan militias incredibly far from home. What the hell are you doing here on the other side of the world? And down they go. <laughs> okay, so the two militias die. The via the uh, monk dies as well. And let's see it. I don't think he's gonna get the mangonel. Will he get the conversion? No. Slam gives him a last big fu. Shoots a bunch of rocks into the ground. Our cumin has a scout. How far is our is Richard from uh, Castle Age? By the way, nowhere close unless he's researching it already. So this uh, stable is not going to be super duper useful. What is our Frank doing, by the way? Besides that siege workshop with the Cuban. Not much. Building up his economy. He's got the highest villager count on his team. Slam our Persian. No surprise there with those quicker town centers. Has the highest villager count on his team. And what is our Saracen doing? Ooh, yeah. Gobbling up resources. Getting ready. Let's see the Mamelukes. For now, we've got camels. Oh, that's so sour. That is incredibly sour. But he brought the relic pretty close. Our cumin is just being such a pain in the ass. 
trying to get the lake, trying to get the uh, this lake. Now he's got infrastructure up here. Oh, H2 has a lot of really cool, nifty, historical tidbits for everyone to learn. I used to love that. Uh... I used to love it in high school when I was uh, playing Age of Empires, the historical aspect of the game. Okay, so all of a sudden, despite a bit of human aggression, for the most part, peace... Peace and prosperity has fallen upon the lands. A bit of a misleading piece as the players are just basically building up their arsenals. Looks like army counts pretty damn similar. Civilian population team southeast with the Persian is out booming the hell. They're ahead like 20-25% villager count. That's a lot of dead monks if those spearmen don't catch up. Good get there for our Frank. And he gets a spear. Okay, not bad. And a Mangonel. That was not a bad incursion at all. He's just got to figure out a way of dealing with the Spearmen, otherwise his cavalry units are going to die. More mutually assured destruction. Another monk. Lots and lots of pin prick. Pin, pin point. Pin point? Pin prick? What's the expression? Attacks. Little tiny battles. <laughs> He's like a cockroach. Here we go, Valis. What are the upgrades on these guys? He is in Imperial. So plus two extra range gives them 10 range. Only plus. Okay, never mind. Now with chemistry plus four attack. Oh, no armor upgrades. Why the hell do you need armor on a unit with 35 HP anyway? Okay. Our Saracen is going light cavalry. So we wanted to see Mamelukes. Instead, we're seeing light cavalry. Is he just saving resources to go up to Imperial? Teal has zero confidence in his ability to hold a 2v1. Mayan to the north, Britain to the west, and immediate... Oh my god, a little premature, no? What is going on here that he's escaping from his base already? There's just one Treb in a castle. At least escape this way. Roggy just uh, completely abandoned ship, and now the Saracen is on the front lines. Okay, let's see what Slam is doing back home. Got a lot of good cavalry civilization on the left. A lot of good camel civilizations on the right. Yeah, the Cuban has a little bit too many fingers in the fire. Too many sticks in the fire. The ex whatever they express. I'm, I'm forgetting all of the uh, expressions. Oh yeah, Richard. They're everyone's first love. I also love the longbow. That big arc of arrows whenever they fire. Oh, it's so nice to look at. So this is literally all that stands between the Britain. Oh no, sour. Last thing you need. Doc, you like camels? Well, you're going to get to see a bunch of them this game, I'm assuming. Although... Slam might be pivoting to Savar soon. We're getting elite longbowmen. Okay. So he's kind of just running around this Cuban base. Our Cuban, I do apologize. You were right. Went for the two town center play. I didn't expect uh, Cosmonaut to be as passive as he is. He's got 2100 wood. Our Sicilian. He's going up to Imperial. Eagle Warriors, 55 HP. They can be got up to 100. What is our Saracen doing to prepare for this? He's going. He is going up to Imperial. Okay, never mind. Slam is also getting Heavy Camels. So, I don't know if he's going Savar or Heavy Camel Rider. It is tough when the Snow Leopards attack you. I mean, you're already kind of screwed here. Oh, and the Longbows. How many kills? 37 kills. <laughs> 34 of them villagers. Oh, and now the Snow Leopard. Down he goes. 
We are getting El Dorado for the Eagle Warriors. We are getting the first crusade for our Sicilian. Okay, so how many town centers does he have? Five exactly. So he's going to be able to add 25 sergeants to this push. Slam is laughing. 130 villagers. Team Northwest's villager count is a little low. They're down about 90 civilian population. They are ahead about 30 army count, though. I don't know what to make of that. Short-term good, long-term bad? A player playing against Mother Nature? Nobody can beat Mother Nature. Oh, goodness. Look at this, Saracen. Look at the wall off he created. He's getting Hussars. Oh, no. Not Hussars against the Lead Eagle Eldorado Warriors. No. Let's see how well that does. Slam might want to start helping out here as well, pivoting, but Roggy is completely dead. Unfortunately for Team Northwest, so is the Cumin who has been completely surrounded by Donjons. I don't know why the Saracen rushed to Imperial, to be honest. I would have uh, assumed he'd want to stick around. Maybe he wants to get the uh, Siege Onagers? That's the only thing I can think of? Maybe he wants to go Hussars? He is banking quite a few of them. They need more upgrades. There's the Savar upgrade for our Persian. And Cavalier for our Frank. Let's see Savar stick on Frankish Paladins. And all of a sudden, the map is just on fire. This dock that's been around from the beginning of time immemorial. The Mayan dock is about to collapse. Our Cuman is dead. Our Viking is dead. And now our Saracen is getting pushed into in a nice 2v1 here. Is anyone sending any help to our Saracen? Yeah, Slam is. A little bit of help here. Hi, Chris. Chris, you want, you're going to want to check out game number one where Mr. Yo controlled the Berbers. Oh, yeah. Siege Onagers are very much outranged by Longbows. I mean, the Korean Siege Onagers with 10 range come close. And now he's got Yeoman. So now they should be at full 12 range. Yeah, not, nothing comes close to this except Bombard Cannons and Trebs now. And Cannon Galleons if we see them. Savars are going to the left. Eagles peel to meet them. They do come with a small attack bonus against Cavalry. Plus four. Our Saracen is absolutely collapsing. Where the hell is Slam going? He's going to cut off reinforcements? Okay, here we go. Saracen slams into the Eagles. Of course, the Eagles just slaughter them. Obviously, duh. The Eagle attacks stronger than you, has a bonus against you, and it has more HP than you. Look at them, they're all dead. But it doesn't matter, the Savars are here, the Trebs are gone, and now Slam. Then a nice loop-de-loop, -loop, a nice hit and run, and now he's retreating. Holy shit, is the Savar a tanky unit with eight pierce armor. By the way, eight pierce armor means that a longbow only does three damage to that unit. Let's see what's going on around the map here because yellow is just pushing. Oh, 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 oh my god. How many donjons do we have? 14. What is our Frank doing to stop this? Are the sergeants elite? Of course they are. Speaking of heavy armor, 7 8 armor. What the hell do you do against that? Our Odmeister has no gold. So he can't really get the paladin upgrade. I guess you focus on throwing axemen. Yeah, that's what he's doing. At this point, a bit of a risky idea for purple. Delete a bunch of these buildings and let's slam surround these longbows. Which, by the way, have 113 kills. 60 of which are villagers. Delete. Oh, my God. Oh, I love when players do what I think they should do. But a little bit too late. Way too late. The longbows escaped. They're in a nook. They're surrounded. By the way, Yeomans also adds attack to these towers. So they attack on a freaking 17.
43 Savars are here though. It's 5,000 HP of Persian horsepower. Frankish infrastructure not really going to accomplish much. Frankish throwing out. Okay. Okay. So a combo of three castles throwing axemen and cavaliers have stopped the Sicilian. For now, now he's just going to make a, <laughs> a new path here. Radu have a fantastic night. Those donjons are like mini castles. They can train sergeants. They can train spearmen line units. So halberdiers. Yeah, Virgilio, when Valis wants to, that's, I think he's the best Rage Forest player, in my opinion. When he wants to, he just ramps up the insane meme build pressure. And now there's nothing that can really approach this. Now he's surrounding himself with towers, which again, attack on a 17. He's got a bunch of eagles, 2,000 HP of eagles here. That are going to try to stop any incursion, any kind of counter attack. But here we go. Slam says, I don't give a shit. Let's go. Oh, he gets vipered. Oh, that's so sour, but he powers through it. And now Valus is in a little bit of trouble. Let's see how this battle unfolds. Okay, Slam wiped out the Eagles, kind of. Okay, he got the Trebs, which is good. But did he put a dent? No, he didn't dent this at all. And no, our Saracen is going hand cannoneers for the Eagles. But they're just going to get shredded to pieces by the craw the uh, longbows. Our Frank is defending. Does he have bearded axe? Let's take a look at the range. No, he does not. And yellow and blue have busted their way in here. For now, yellow's kind of on his own. Our Sicilian still just has basic onager, not siege onager. Our cumin is retreating for the second time, but where's he going? A lot of infrastructure, but where are these villagers going? Is he going all the way here? Oh, there's already a longbow here. He's going to see all of it. No, he can't possibly be going this way. Oh, sorry, I, the longbow's on his team. What am I talking about? Does any trade? Uh, does a e do either of these teams have trade? I don't think they do. It looks like Orange's supply maxed out with 47 Eagles, 34 Halberdiers. But you know what? The Donjons are definitely going to help. Maybe target the Longbows if you want. I'm going to highlight the Savars to see how quickly the HP goes down. Yeah, the HP. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Our Viking is adding skirmishers. See, this is the problem when you're playing against the Britons and you're behind and the Britons have a death ball. Hand cannoneers do nothing. Skirmishers do nothing. You have to overwhelm it. The, you, you can't you can't fight it like this. If there were 20 longbows, maybe you could build skirmishers and fight it. But now it's just way too many. <laughs> Myra, you're in shock. I was in shock when I saw it. Our Saracen is going skirmishers as well. I mean, this is just, uh, this is a disaster. So let's see what's going on around the map to the west. Our Sicilian continues to lay siege to Frankish lands. Two of three castles are about to fall. The sergeants just refuse to freaking die with their base armor. Seven, eight is redonkulous. Oh no, and now this onager is a siege onager as well. Okay, so our Frank is, uh... Gonna get his ass knocked out of his base. To the north. Uh, not much happening yet. Oh, the villagers tried to get the Onager. The Onager kills them. So we'll see how well Valis does now that he's getting pushed into. Slam, by the way, is about to slam the Mayan base from behind. Frankish infrastructure is still around. The Dondrons don't exactly attack crazy with only a 12 attack. 
And let's see how this shapes up. Slam has carved his army up into multiple groups. He's here to the north. But I really want to see what's going on here. How the hell do you deal with this death ball of longbows? They've got 217 kills. They are in perfect health. After 40 minutes, they're in perfect health because Valus brought along eight freaking monks. And when they're not busy converting Savars, they are healing up those longbows. Yeah, the map is doing its usual loop-to-loop -loop where one team pushes in through one direction, the other team pushes in through another direction. Our Mayan, by the way, is super happy to just keep wasting Halberd ears here. The Longbows are just destroying everything. The Trebs are destroying... Does he have Warwolf? What's the area of effect range half -tile? Yes, he does. What a beautiful thing to see. Synchronicity with Longbows. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to shut up and watch the beauty of it. Oh, man. Who doesn't love Longbows? Who doesn't love Siege Onagers? What's the kill count? Only 13. Not the highest of Siege count. Oh, Arcumen, Arcumen. He's using that speed. Is he an Imperial? No, he's not. Oh, my God. Richard is still not an Imperial, so his units only move 10% faster, not 15. Does manage to get a few of the Onagers, I guess. Not a bad trade versus... Uh, for a few light cavalry units. I think if we saw a lot more trade, we'd see Mamelukes. But I think you're right. I think on a, on a shoestring budget here, we're not we're not going to see any of them. By the way, these Savars are just making their way through the Mayan base. Our Mayan, uh, he's only uh, knocked down to 84 villagers. He's kind of just taking it. You got to be careful. Uh, even if you're just building eagles, you're not exactly the Incas with a discount. And holy shit, 50 Savars. I mean, I want to see what's going on around the map, especially these Siege Onagers who are wasting time attacking farms for some reason. But I really want to see what happens here. Look at Purple. Look at how many skirmishers he's got queued up in each one of these archery ranges. The archery ranges, which, by the way, Valus is using to protect himself from the Savars. Oh my god, one longbow attacking here. Four kills. Did he get all the fishing ships? I think he may have gotten all the fishing ships. Oh my god, how many kills on this converted Safar? Oh, Valus, Valus, you beast. 12 villager kills by this converted Savar. And here we go. They deleted the archery ranges. Perfect move by Purple. 50 have become 28. Valus. His longbows are still at 100% HP. Now there's 80 of them. Their kill count is 277. And he's converted even more Savars. He's got five Savars of his own. To the north. I feel like this attack has kind of stopped. Or, or is that just me? By the way, look at how cocky. Look at how cocky our Viking is. Putting two three markets in the middle of French territory when our Frank still has villagers here. That is just the height of cockiness as the Eagles now take on the Donjon. Oh, we saw a longboat! And we're seeing more longboats. This game just has freaking everything. Ooh, your exam. What, uh, what topic is your exam in? Cosmonaut is finally at Valus's base. Yeah, he's making himself at home here. Our Cumin, though. Our Cumin needs to get his ass up to Imperial. I really, I can't peel my eyes away from the south. We've got Savars, we've got Longboats. We've got Longbows and Longboats. For those, uh, and by the way, they're elite, both of them. The Chukanu of the water attacking. We are an hour into this game. I don't know what the hell is going on, but oh, wait a second. 
Wait a second, the longbows are exposed. I'm trying to click on them. I'm clicking the farms. The Savars need to pounce right now. They're out in the open. How many Savars does he have? 48. This is the moment. This is the moment for Slam. He's got an attack right now. He's going after the monks with the Savars. I thought that's why he brought the light cavalry. And Valus. Valus is about to get wiped off the face of the earth. Oh, high school college entry exam. Good luck. Best of luck to you. If there was, uh, if there were questions about longbows and longboats in Age of Empires, we could help, but unfortunately... <laughs> okay, Valus has been knocked down to a meager 58. The longboats are still here. Focus on the longbows! What are you attacking? And he has to retreat. Wow, what an opportunistic get there for Blue, but he loses so many Savars in doing this. Let's take a look at what our... Oh, no, I we missed it. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, remind me at the end of the game to rewind to the 55-ish minute mark of the game. I want to see what happened to all of the Siege Onagers that Cosmonaut had. Somebody, somebody, please remind me to uh, rewind. Ballas is still here. He's got 53. They've got 200 kills. Our Frank is in stunned disbelief at the balls of this yellow trab. I mean, you can attack it. You can attack the trab. Nothing's going to stop you. Yellow has no units here. <laughs> He's walling off. I love it. He says... A big F you middle finger to the trade. He just walling, walls this off. I, oh, amazing. Our mine has pivoted. Our Cuban is finally an Imperial. Yeah, Doc, I was very excited about that push. I don't know if I should have been as excited. That was a huge loss for Slam. That is a lot of Savars that he lost. And now he's replenishing with Light Cav, which is... Uh, uh, I don't know. I wanted to say, like, second best, but <laughs> I don't even know if it's second best. Our Cumin, hello and welcome to the game. With your ridiculous 1.74 tile per second movement speed. But you know what? If our Cumin can start adding in 100 Hussars, the Sicilian might be in trouble. I love that Valis, by the way. If you If you take a look at the top of your screen... I don't know why it took us here. Our Britain has more Savars than our Persian. A fun Actually, no, I'm such an idiot. Never mind. Our Persian still has 17. Ooh, I don't know about this push. Yeah, Virgilio, good point. Now the trade routes are gonna trade cards are gonna be rerouted. I think Yellow noticed it because he's attacking. Red's base, and it looks like, by the way, Red managed to get rid of the the markets. Or no, never mind. They deleted them and replaced them over here. Oh, I love it. I love Rage Forest. Savars are trying to do a loop de loop. There's a lot of exposed trebs here. Where are they going? Oh, they they don't they don't want to get converted. Oh my god, blast damage on Trebs, Warwolf. I thought they were attacking the skirmishers. I think some of them are, no? No, they're going after the fishing ships. Our Cuban, how many? 29 Hussars. He's got 127 villagers. Richard has 72 villagers on food. You need a lot more than 29 Hussars. Purple is wasting his time attacking eagles with the skirmishers. You should be shift clicking the longbows as much as you can. Hand cannoneers again. Oh no. 
Dratek, why the hand cannoneers? But you know what? Valus is being pushed back. Valus is retreating. Where's the eagle spam? The eagle spam is up north. I guess. Sicilian light cap takes on cumin hussars yeah, it's, it's like the old guard Yeah, the fishermen just wanted to, to work they just wanted an honest days Living and instead they get a bunch of Britain trample blast damage Warwolf traps blowing up their uh, fishing trap. Okay, Valus has been knocked down. He's got 80 longbows. I'm not sure where the other 30 are, but 50 of them are here. And now finally the Persian has upgraded his light cavalry to Hussars. By the way, I'm seeing trade, I think. What's the payload on the trade? 81 is not bad. And look at this Arcuman. Our human has reclaimed the Mayan base. He's gonna, he has a long way, though, until he can uh, take on the Sicilian halberdiers on his own, though. I, By the way, am I the only one in this game that completely forgot that we have a Viking in this game after those longboats disappeared? I completely forgot. He's got a hundred skirmishers queued. Where is Teal's infrastructure? Where are these skirmishers coming from? Where are the other three? Yikes, they're coming from a long way. Okay. Bye bye tower, I guess. Ooh, our mine replenishes. Let's take a look at how many trade cards. 13, 23, 16, and 8. 40, 37, 31, and 20. Okay. Team Southeast has about five times the trade. Team Northwest has 80 more army supply and pretty damn good army supply at that. Yeah, Quantum, you'd think somebody would figure out to put a couple of uh, units inside a few rams. Where are these war galleys being built? What? Okay, he wants to... Oh my god, he wants to... <laughs> our Saracen wants to sideswipe the Briton. Okay. A couple of cheeky little moves there. More Savars moving in, but the monks are ready for them. They're 12 range. Man, this is what happens when you deal with a longbow death ball. You lose four longbows for about 10 or 15 skirmishers. Let's see how our cumin is doing, by the way. Oh, damn, Frank. Cumin. Everyone's here with Halberdy. This is like a symphony of trash units. The Saracen galleys, they bump out, and now we're getting... Did I say a cannon galleon? Yeah. <laughs> There's a cannon galleon in here, too. But Valus is continuing to encroach with his nice OCD row of towers. Why the hell is he adding more hand cannoneers? Why is he going eight hand cannoneers? There's no more eagles here. Your skirmishers are going to do just fine. What you should be adding is siege. Ooh, looks like this castle from our Viking tried to go up. Our cumin, by the way, let's see. 45 hussars, still a little bit low. I thought for sure we'd see at least like 100 hussars out of him. 37 skirmishers, 27 pike for our Viking. 
Looks like another sortie of blue cavalry dies here. Is something attacking the trade? Oh, the onager is accidentally... Look at the slam, by the way. In the middle of all of this, he's building extra lanes on the highway. I love it. I love the attention to detail. By the way, our Frank still doesn't have enough money to train a single cavalier or even think about going up. Oh, there they are. To Paladin. Look at this. This is amazing. 12 towers, each one attacking on a 17. <laughs> Noob style? I thought it was like OCD style, but... He's basically just going to keep retreating back, and as he retreats back... These skirmishers are going to die, but here we go. Finally, somebody brings in some siege. Oh my god, what did it take? An hour and 15 minutes? You know, Team Southeast is kind of stuck in a third of the map. Actually, you no, know what am I talking about? Yeah, Team Northwest has map control approximately? Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, somebody timestamp an hour and 15 minutes because we just, we just, I just missed like an idiot. The death of the longbows. The longbow army just disappeared. Uh-oh. And just like that, look at that. Team Southeast now takes the score lead. Look how close they are. They're literally at the exact same score. What an absolute epic game. Hexit! Thanks for lurking. <laughs> yeah, somebody, Vir Virgilio, timestamp 115 for us. <laughs> or for me. Oh, I feel like such an idiot. Oh no, how did you get into here? Oh, he finally busted down and now he's gonna kill all of these poor, poor villagers. Reverie, nice to see you. Yeah, that usually happens in these games. It's like a yin-yang situation where the players just trade off starting positions. Army counts, now Team Southeast is ahead by 100. Civilian economic population basically identical. Okay, high octane volume here as an eagle and a halberdier attack a house. And finally, Slam. Slam realizes this is what he should have been doing all along. <laughs> Thanks for Jillio. <laughs> Exit, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Aries Barros. First great match. Hello from Brazil. Hello. Hello, hello. Pietro, first time. How long does a game usually last? It usually lasts about 50 minutes to an hour. This one's a, a little this one's a lot longer than usual. Maduban is here as well. Hello, hello. Yeah, this is like the 11th round of a boxing match at this point. And look at our Saracen. We wanted to see Mamelukes. Instead, we're seeing 77 skirmishers. Hello to all the new faces, by the way. Pietro, Ares. Oh, Maduban, five minutes is more than enough. Okay, it looks like finally our Sicilian is back to pushing with the Viking help. And all of a sudden, Team Southeast is on a warpath. But for some reason, Purple keeps killing the wrong units with his skirmishers. He keeps focusing on the eagles and not on the longbows. You've got Savars for that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, trade carts. Trade cards carrying 106 gold. <laughs> By the way, what happened here? Where's that Savar? 20 kills, 17 of them villagers. Ugh. Disgust.
Where are Slam's sea drams, by the way? I, we, I, I also missed the destruction of the sea drams. He's only got three left. 160 skirmishers? Who has 160? The Viking? Counterweights there, finally. Finally, we're gonna get to see Saracen Siege. And we're finally gonna get to see Cuban Paladin. Oh, the fastest moving Paladin in the game. Yeah, especially Abdullah when they're in a death ball like this. I mean, this is 53, but before it's so hard, especially with Eagles. Because they just counter all of the trash units that counter the longbows. And these are Mayan Eagles, so they have 100 HP. So they're going to last a long time. <laughs> it took him seven minutes to get back up. Oh my god, uh, the Saracen is bonkers. I thought you were talking about the Viking who has 76 pikemen and 75 skirmishers queued. Orange is pinging over here. Why? Why is he pinging over here? Our Cuban, by the way, is going up to 27 paladins. We're an hour and 24 minutes into this game. The scores are literally 1% apart. Isn't that bonkers? How hard fought this game is by both teams. 1% apart. Crazy. Oh, but a couple of flatteners there by the Sicilian. Uh-oh, be careful. He loses the siege. Okay. Why do Kels get Paladin? I have no clue. It's a pretty, uh, pretty bad Paladin. Oh, yeah, they're just... At this point, they're just exhausted, these boxers. And, the, yeah, they're... Where are the Frankish Paladins? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. We've got four Frankish Cavaliers here in the middle of nowhere. They have one kill. Not too sure where the Paladins are. Red has been gold starved, although now he's got 900 gold. Doesn't have the other resources, but he's got 900 gold. Uh-oh. Valus on the high ground. Valus and Cosmonaut just have, look at their scores, 40,000, 40,000. They're just absolutely in dominant control of this game. Good night, Maduban. Oh, I hope we don't enter into a, an hour of trash war here. Human paladins, look at that movement speed, 1.56. It's almost as fast as a camel. The scores are still literally 200 and 100 points apart. This is insane. This is literally insane. Ah. <laughs> Saracen and Cannoneers make an appearance. What's moving forward here? A whole bunch of Viking units. Where's our Frank, by the way? And what the hell is he doing? He's got infrastructure everywhere. Something killed all those Saracen galleons unless they just deleted themselves. There's always a possibility. Valus is back with 66 longbows. Good night, Richard. Yeah, I, I, I would prefer to see the Frankish Paladin, but honestly, the Cuban Paladin is pretty damn cool. And he's going up to 65 of them. Wow. So Richard, who was knocked out almost immediately is now back with 66 paladins. Oh, there's your Saracen siege. There it is, it's, it's hunting, it's hunting. Oh yeah. Daddy-like. Five more siege hunters on the way with torsion. Do they have torsion engines? I'll take a look at when they uh, pop out of there. Uh, torsion engines, I am an idiot. Counterweights, torsion engines are the uh, Ethiopians. Yeah, the minimap is ridiculous. I'm having a very difficult time trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Does our Viking have Bogs Vagar? Yes, he does. Okay, so Team East is now, I think, I mean, look at the scores, they're identical. I was gonna say Team Southeast looks like they're winning. 
but then you pivot back down here and all of a sudden the viking uh the britain is back pietro i know if this is ridiculous this is absolutely ridiculous I mean, we don't want to see trash wars, but we're seeing 66 paladins out of our cumin. We're getting fully upgraded arbalest out of our Viking. Not gonna miss it this time. Valus retreats. He's got 36 longbows left. Loses his trebs, loses the high ground. Okada Peruta would be awesome here in this situation. Yeah, a, a good onager shot is is <laughs> it's a work of art. Fire Lord, welcome. I think he's not going. Now he's going up to Paladin. Now he's going up to Paladin. You summoned it at the one hour and thirty one minute mark of the game. He is going up to Paladin. Yeah, Persians have those Commander and crossbows that cost sixty wood. But look at the Paladin swarm. Oh no, it's gonna wreck everything here. 180 HP, 18 attack. Okay, but you know what? There's some Sicilian halberdiers here. He retreats. He cannot take on three armies on uh, by himself. Where is Valus, by the way? <laughs> what is happening here? What is going on? How is there a Sicilian ram in here? Oh, I guess he busted in through the right here. And by the way, this castle ended up going up. Remember this castle? from like an hour ago. Our Frank has Paladins. Fully upgraded. I know, I'm uh, I'm very excited, but unfortunately he doesn't have very many of them. Only 18 plus one. Does our Sicilian tell me he's got a Hauberk? He's got to have Hauberk, right? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Our Mayan. Our Mayan is adding war galleys. Why the hell not? You're broke. You got no stone, no food. Might as well add some war galleys. There's some Mamelukes. An hour and 34 minutes into the game, we've got Mamelukes. And we've got Berserkers. This is a game we needed to see an hour ago. Hi, Tenchi. You are joining... At possibly the most exciting moment, shit is hitting the fan all over the place. We're back to Savars. How the hell did Slam afford Savars? I guess that crazy trade. How much are these trade cards carrying? 27 gold. Okay, his is carrying 102. <laughs> okay, Paladins from our Cuban have been pushed back. Viking infantry is here. I'm hoping he has Chieftains and the attack bonus against Cavalry. Plus 27 versus the usual, what is it, plus 22? Oh my god, look at the, the resignations! <gasps> Matthias, hello, hello, and welcome. Wow. I mean, this is strange. 419 halberdiers? I thought that would for sure be something else. I mean, the the longbows I'm not shocked about at all. But this? Let's take a look at the stats. Oh, Matthias, I disabled the chat when I cast uh, the game. So I, I'm sure they said GG to one another. For, <laughs> for sure they said GG. And we got to see Mamelukes at the end of the day with 11 whole kills. We got to see 45 Berserkers queued. Yikes. Yeah, I, I guess we're the idiots, I, or I'm the idiot. Uh, Saracen ultimately hand cannoneers do win the, the day. Let's take a look at the stats, and then we're going to go back Virgilio to 55 and an hour and 15. I want to see what happened to those longbows, and I want to see what happened to those siege onagers. Biggest donor was Valus. Of course, he doesn't need that many resources for his longbows. 14,000 recipient cumin. Okay, this is how we got those paladins. Trade? What is this? 32, 52, 68. Let's call this 30 and 40, 70. Okay, about the same trade at the end of the day-ish. Our Sicilian 1,600 kills in Valus 1542. 
One with Sea Johnagers and Sergeants, one with Longbow. Holy shit, who came in third? Our Mayan, of course. And then 992 Slam 937 our Saracen. What? An absolute epic, epic game. <laughs> Abdullah, you're absolutely right. We got to see finally. Where are you, Mr. Uh, per, uh, Mr. Uh, Paladin? I mean, look where they are on the minimap. Literally at the three o'clock position. Can they even get out of here? Is this even open? All right, let's go to the 55 minute mark and see what happened to those. Oh my God, how long ago was the 55 minute mark? So does Yellow still have his... Okay, so Yellow still has his Onagers. So let's see what happens to these Onagers. I'm going to fast forward a little bit till we see. I did about a minute before. It must be these Cuban Light Cavalry units, right? Oh, look at them spreading out. Look at them spreading out. Oh, no, never mind. They're going after the, the Trebs. But now, all of a sudden, the Onagers are exposed. There's nothing really to kill them, though. Okay. So he got one trap. Now he's closing in. Okay. Something's going to have to kill these guys. It was at the 55 minute mark, right? I'm so curious. I'm sorry, guys. We have one more game queued up. But I really need to know what the hell happened to these onagers. Is he training light cavalry out of here? Maybe they pop out and ambush them as they... As they make their way through here. Yeah, the light cav ambushed them. Brilliant move out of Richard. As the onagers move through this narrow choke point ish. This okay, and then he kills, I guess, the other the other few are their HP is so weak. I mean this guy's HP is three. Wow. What an ambush. No, we did see the uh we did see the throwing axeman. Oh yeah, he made an appearance. So a beautiful ambush. From our cumin. Ready. Okay, uh, so what was it? Let, let's see here, because the Savars just kind of pushed through it. There's 51 longbows. Let's see what, what happens to them. The Savars surround. Then they die. <laughs> was it the, the Saracen skirmishers? Oh, he got all the trebs as well here in the south of the towers. Fantastic get. Yeah, then the okay, now the hussars are coming in. I see. The longbows were focusing on the savars, who are killing the trebs, and then the skirmishers were just absolutely shelling away at the longbows. Thirty-four kills on them. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to mute my mic to sneeze. What an absolute epic! Epic game. I mean, that might be one for the books. That game was absolutely epic. And I think we have time for one more. Uh, yeah, this one. And I believe this should be the last game of the... Of the evening, I... <laughs> unless it's like a four-hour game. Last game, last beer. Nice. We did see, yeah, I, I thought we saw some Frankish throwing axemen taking on the uh, Sicilian for a while. So you got Teal, Gray. Okay, so you guys are definitely Team South. Ready for my granny typing? Ooh, we've got Doubt here as well. Pietro, good night. I'm glad, I'm glad the game ended before you uh, you left. And we got to see the uh, epic conclusion. 
Yeah, I wish we got to see a lot more of the Frankish Paladin. I wish we got to see the Frankish Paladin take on the Cuman Paladin. Let's take a look now. We've got more Sicilian fun as Sensar playing the Sicilians in gray. In his pocket, Carpincho. Carpincho as the Bohemians. Okay, not a Civ we've seen yet. The Berbers again by Roggy this time. And rounding up the team, we've got Double ZX as the Burgundians to the north. <laughs> deadbeat Dan. Okay. <laughs> Who the hell is Dan? And why is he a deadbeat? We'll see if deadbeat Dan goes conics with the Bulgarians. Motastic as the Spanish in red. Macro ZZ as the Dravidians in blue. And last but not least, the Lord Doubt as the Teutons in yellow. Myra, that game was an absolute slugfest of a game. Ooh, Catherine. Catherine, you missed an absolute banger of a conclusion to the last game. Chris, we're seeing Berbers again. Uh, like I said, Chris, go back to the first game afterwards if you're so inclined. And Mr. Yo was playing Berbers. Let's take a look at the map. We've got the Sicilian taking on the Teuton. The battle of the Teutonic Knight versus Mini Teutonic Knight. One avenue of attack between them. Purple and green, Burgundian and Bulgarian. So the latter of the, the battle of the BUs. Two avenues of attack. Very annoying. Oh, more scouts are joining in on the fun. And he's got to get the hell away. Oh, he's trying to get the teal scout. Okay, interesting. The teal scout is very weak. Green might be able to pick him off. As long as purple doesn't interfere. Yeah, one more hit. One more hit for somebody. Uh, Teal knows that he gets the hell away from here. And that's it. Now, this is interesting. What does this look like to you? This looks like all, also like a dragon to me with the ear, the eyeball, the mouth. I'm seeing a lot of things. I have uh, have not dropped acid this night. I do, uh, but I am seeing a lot of images in the clouds. Berserker, best caster out there. No, oh, you're best berserker out there. I'm glad you could join us in between killing and pillaging and quaffing and everything else that a good berserker does. Ooh, Abdullah senses a Flemish revolution in the mix. Will it happen? Will the button be pressed? I don't think I've ever seen the Flemish revolution used in a four-on-four -four Rage Forest match. I'll, I'll only say that. I want to see it. I'm a, I'm a fan. But I don't think I've ever seen it actually used in a 4v4. Will Dalko Cav Archers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's gonna go, he's gonna go Scouts. <laughs> Chris, it looks like a, it does look like a bunny. Like a demented, like, scary evil bunny that's about to gobble up this blue scout. Residual acid in the system? Could be. How long does acid stay in your system? Uh, <laughs> questions that enter my mind. Can we see idle eco? Let's see if that's something that I can see. Eco, G-E-A, -E I, I Honestly, Virgilio, uh, here we go. If you can make sense of this... Kudos, I have no clue. Oh, there's Idle Eco, actually. Never mind. Never mind. So Doubt has 3.5%, uh, whatever that means. Two minutes and 54 seconds. Purple has the most. Of course, he's got to do two big wall-offs. And also fight with his scouts. He is taking a lake, which is not bad. Ooh, not too sure about the location of this... Oh my goodness. The interface here is so amazing and complex, and I don't know any of it. <laughs> Age of drugs. A deep sea bunny? Yeah, like one of those creepy... What, what's the uh, name of that fish with that la light bulb on its head? That lures the uh, other fish into seeing what that light is, and then it eats them? Catherine sticks her THC. Okay. 
Indica or Sativa? Let's see what's going on around the map. Four pull, four hour Spaniard. Motastic, will he get all three? Guns one down. Okay, come on, come on, come on. He's about to run away. Okay, gets him right in time. Or maybe not. At least lure him underneath the town center. Okay, does ultimately get all three. Not the cleanest of pulls, but doesn't really matter. The end result is what matters. Donkey Darko. <laughs> and she is an Indica guy, okay. Like to relax on the couch with a Domino's. An angler fish, that's right. Myra, thank you so much. It's like a backwards angler fish. Creepy, creepy deep sea creatures. I absolutely hate the deep sea creatures. They're so, <laughs> it's like aliens. Indica as well. Okay, interesting. Well, hopefully everyone is relaxing in whatever way they want tonight. This should be the last game. We'll see how well Doubt does it. Always a big wild card when you have Doubt in these games. You don't know what the hell he's going to do. He can go up to Feudal at the 45-minute mark of the game. He can go up to Feudal at the 5-minute mark of the game. He can do whatever he pleases. For now, it's our Bohemian who surrounds these villagers with two scouts. Or he can throw nine villagers out of 26 into the meat grinder here. And there we go. So let's see what's going on around the map. We've got a wall off being built by purple. Our Burgundian wants nothing to do with either Bulgarian or Spaniard. Teal, are you helping your teammate out? No, you're going fast castle with a market and a blacksmith. Our Bohemian. Ooh, a bit of a sparse base here. Focusing his scout, his food income on scouts to the north. I mean, I, I always say this with doubt. He, he fights tooth and nail to get into his opponent's base, to wall himself, to take fights. To what end? <laughs> What's the point? Why are you idling 10 of your villagers? And then you just delete it so that this one villager can be safe. Her guard approaches. Oh, but now Orange is going to join in. Oh, murder, suicide. But Dowd has secured the location with a wall off palisade though it is. And as always, everyone on his team is heading up to Castle Age and Doubt is still stuck in dark. What are his resources like? 120 food. Okay, but not the guy's fault. He had to fight over this area just so that him and his enemy can carve it up like this. Is this Orange's last scout? No, he's got another scout. Oh, is that the vision scout down here? They're trying to corral this one uppity bohemian scout who just refuses to stop. Okay, but every time he changes direction, our Dravidian catches up. Boom. Might be the height of insult to be killed by Dravidian cavalry. The, mo the worst cavalry in the game. Must be like the most embarrassing thing. You, you, you die. You go up to Valhalla. And then they ask you how many, you know, how did you die? How many, how many of the enemy did you take out with you? And you go, oh, I didn't, I didn't take any enemy out. I died to a Dravidian cavalry unit. <laughs> you almost moved back to Canada when they uh, legalized weed. <laughs> you don't want any of the, oh no, no villager, careful. You don't want any of the shitty government weed that Canada has, believe you me. Fifty pop, <laughs> fifty pop, feudal. <laughs> oh my god! Well, at least blue is. Uh... I thought for a second blue was attacking doubts of palisades, if that's even possible. No, he's attacking uh, sensors. Our Sicilian, by the way, is also nowhere close to... Actually, wait a second. Doubt will be the last one to hit Feudal. 
you'll be the last one by 50 seconds. <laughs> That's funny, Quantum. And, and absolutely accurate, too. Although, it, it, Sativa would be like a Monk Rush, but not your average Monk Rush. It'll be like a Monk Rush mixed in with some crazy unit composition that you think makes sense in the moment and then makes absolutely no sense when you look at it back. Dying to a Spanish archer as well. Yeah, that's also pretty embarrassing. Oh, that's so sour. What's embarrassing is having to pull two boars. Is there a third? Yeah, there's a third and there's three more here. Jealously guarded by a snow leopard. Shitty weeder risk jail. <laughs> do what these castles decide to do. Camel archers. Camel archers against the Spanish could not... Eh, maybe could work. Could work mobility. Attack bonus against cavalry archer armor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think that Mangonel is doing more damage to these Palisades and these uh, Spearmen. Well, I'm surprised they're able to take a pack, take a punch from the Mangonel. The attack's on a 40. Oh, they have 45 HP, right? Okay. And there you go. This is why I'm always uh, curious as to why the players delay themselves so long. They fight so hard. And then ultimately, five minutes later, what they didn't want happening happens anyway, so... But it is what it is. Let's see how Doubt defends himself against this tiny, but possibly problematic Bohemian a, a incursion? Inquisition! Okay, so our, uh, <laughs> our Spaniard with the monastery up is going to want to make everything the Berber throws at him his own. Oh, Catherine, that's so nice of you. That's because I've been smoking sativa all night long. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But I do appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Doubt. Retreats north, but he's still in feudal age. Okay, he's 45 seconds away from castle. So not exactly human that he can build a second town center yet. Ooh, Doc is also... Uh, Maybe we'll do a special stream on April 20th. Oh, I'm Canadian. We're way past judging. No one judges anyone. What's going on with our Burgundian? He's taking residency in this. I'm not a big... I'm not a fan of these uh, dock placements at all. This is a lot of wasted space. Doubts in Castle, second town center, third town center. He thinks he can hold this as the Tudans, and maybe not wrong. They can garrison 10 extra villagers in their town centers, and he does have Dravidian help. Is it the Dravidians whose uh, siege is cheaper when it comes to wood? I think either it's a third. Oh my god, I'm I'm I might be confusing it with another civilization. Somebody in the chat. I think it's the Dravidians whose siege costs 33% less wood, right? Somebody let me know, uh, unless I'm completely wrong. Camel Arch is moving forward. One conversion already, but down goes not only the Spanish castle, but all the units inside as our Berber just powers through into Imperial. Our Spaniard's in Imperial too, but... His castle's down. At least he managed to save his trebs. What's his stone count? Motastic. Only at 100 stone. Doubt. Luckily, the Dravidian is here to save his ass with crossbows. The Korean? No, the Kore <laughs> Korean... Korean... Uh, you. I mean, Korean units on the whole cost uh, less wood. It is the Dravidian's dock? Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. Well, welcome to Cast of Empires for all the new faces where your 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 caster thinks he knows what the hell he's talking about. Isn't always right. 
Oh, that's a nice attack round there. Okay, so players disengaged. Doubt is safe for now. He is in Castle Age. What's his uh, population like? Surprisingly, he has more villagers than the Spaniard. Who's going to try to convert the hell out of this Berber armor? Army, rather, not armor. Does get the scout. Oh, so close to losing a monk to that Treb. Yeah, it's a 33% wood discount. So it's not like the slabs that have just a basically... 15% discount on the whole. I, theirs just applies to wood. Okay, you cannot see the tech tree from cast Capture Age. No, you have to go into the actual game for that. Camel Archer doesn't notice he's being converted. And he becomes Catholic. And turns around on his former Treb teammate. As does the scout. And down it goes. An interesting play to go supremacy here by the uh, Spaniard against the Berbers. Camel archers aren't cheap, but they're not exactly like a big tanky slow unit, you know? Alejandro, hello, hello. They also get 200 wood on advancing, which is pretty damn cool. It's a very synergistic uh, feature of them to get the extra wood and all the wood discount on siege. It really hits in castle. Although you have to decide whether you want to spend that wood on a town center or a siege workshop or whatever. But by then, 400 extra wood is not a bad, uh, not a bad little gift. By the way, if there are people watching or listening who are new, come say hello. We are a friendly bunch. I always like to uh, see new faces, although <laughs> new faces with an asterisk that it's uh, I'm seeing you in a chat. Dravidian Castle is up. Are we going to get to see Urumis? No, we're going to get to see Imperial Age in 40 seconds. Doubt's getting Wheelbarrow. How many town centers does he have? Five. Okay, so he's survived. Doubt playing a, a bit of a <laughs> normal game, which is... Uh, Doubt, doubting himself, I guess. Hi, Matthias. Oh, yeah, shame about the Dravidian cavalry. Even with Wu's steel, it is just an absolute disgusting cavalry line. It is missing literally the most important upgrades. But I guess when you ignore armor, I guess it's like, it's like the Teuton scout that has the extra melee armor in Imperial. It's not good, but it's not like super duper terrible. Could be worse, as uh, my grandfather always used to tell me when I asked him how he was. Just a bunch of nerds watching video games. Uh, sign me up for that, please. The Dravidian should get camels? I kind of like it that they have a very weak cavalry line. I like that. I like, I like when civs have very strong features. Like their elephant archers that fire as fast as a frickin' Mangadai. Or the Urumi Swordsman with trample damage, charge attack, and ignoring armor. But they also have a glaring weakness. Like their absolute dog shit cavalry line. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Ooh, in the nick of time, the boar goes down. Blue has made himself. Okay, speaking of those elephant archers 1.6. They're not elite yet. And look at that. 32 minutes into the game. Again? Peace? What is our Bulgarian doing? Deadbeat Dan with the war galley defense. Okay. Forget your fishing ships. Forget your fishing industry. Glaring weaknesses. That's exactly what I wanted. To, that's the exact phrase that I was looking for. But the Dravidians are always fun to watch. Just because, again, like I said, the elephant archers... And the Urumi Swordsman, oh my god, he's getting a Siege Tower? That, what's he gonna, what's he gonna pop over the Siege Tower? His crossbows? What are you gonna do with that? Well, I guess we'll find out. What is our Spaniard doing, by the way, after a failed attempt to convert the entire Berber nation? He still has 11 monks. Cavaliers, he's getting conscription. So everyone is an Imperial except for Doubt and Sensar. 
the original two attackers of one another. The Bohemians are cocking. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what the Bohemian is up to. I mean, he certainly has expanded quite well. What's he got? Haufnitzes. Okay. Doubt sends a knight, but this is not a Frankish knight with extra line of sight, so he's not going to see very much. He's going to see a wall off and then Haufnitzes. Okay. In come the elephant archers. Uh, why? Okay. They're going to be elite in 50 seconds. By the way, Grace sees all of this with the wall off, with the vision, with all of it. Sees everything coming his way. Oh, finally. 35, 36 minutes into the game. Okay, I got way too excited there for what's happening. Our Burgundian Berber combo is meeting with Bulgarian infantry. Which gets completely overrun. Oh no, oh no, our Spaniard a little bit too slow to move the monks out of the way. Motastic, why are you bringing your trebs forward? You have no way to defend them. He is trying to convert the hell out of these cavaliers. He's getting a bunch of them. Okay, not a bad... Bad save there for red. Does save four of the monks. Does have a castle up, delays the Berber push with a treb. Why is there a siege tower here? <laughs> I slim Jim. <laughs> I think uh, I. Oh, never mind. The Bohemian wants to fight now. I think it was Memb who said in one of his live streams that whenever he plays Rage Forest, if he has the lowest score in the game, then his team is going to win. By the way, remember, these Bohemian Halberdiers do 25% more bonus damage. So Cavalry 40, War Elephant 35. And remember, the Elephant has both armor classes, so 75 da bonus damage. There is Doubt. There we go. Bereta, they say, as they move forward. Let's see how well they do. I mean, we know how well they're going to do. They're absolutely going to demolish these halberdiers. Let's see it. If they can close. I mean, everything in this army is going to demolish these halberdiers. Unfortunately, there's a bunch of onagers behind. Blue. I'm assuming you got regenerating elephant. Uh, what the hell's the name of that upgrade? Medical core. Oh, that's so sour. I had such high hopes for these. <laughs> Doubt. He's doubling down on Teutonic Knights. Looks like they're getting trade set up to the north as well. Oh, Hafnitsa with the blast radius just absolutely wrecking everything here. Oh. Yeah, those onagers were like a colonic. He is completely cleared up of his Teutonic uh, bacteria. Let's see what's going on. B Burgundian is pushing in. He's getting paladins. Okay. Burgundian's generally the first to paladin because their stable techs are 50% cheaper. So they can hit that paladin with a good timing. The problem is, like the Celts, they don't have bloodlines. So it's a bit of a lackluster paladin. These have Nitsa balls, by the way, are absolutely sniper. Sniper accurate. They are killing every bombard cannon, every monk. This is incredible. Elephant archers wasting time focusing on a barracks. Hafnitsa's fire yet again. Another Teutonic Knight dies on the left. Everything is getting flattened. By this Sicilian siege. Let's see how many kills he's actually got. No, but never mind. The, the Teutonic Knights closed. This is the thing with Teutonic Knights. They're so slow. You can take out 90% of them with onagers. But if the other 10% closes on you, they're like invincible. They don't die. Ah, right as he says that they all die. But still, you guys get my point. You know what I'm talking about.
elephants 38 of them 10,000 hp doubt it's continuing to spam teutonic knights he's bringing villagers forward he's got 500 stone what the hell are the villagers for okay never mind moves them back somebody needs something quick to close in on these onagers otherwise they're just gonna stay on this high ground here and just shell the hell away at these teutonic knights let's see what's going on here the berber has busted in to the Bulgarian base. Our Bulgarian res responding with siege onagers. Halberdiers. Light cab of his own. Where are they? What are they doing? Where are the conics? Uh, what is our Spaniard doing? Trying to convert a light cavalry unit? Interesting moves on the west side of the map, but the east is where the super duper fun action is. Doubt castle incoming. Okay, now he's got 850 stone. Oh, the snipering of the Hafnitsa is just ridiculous. Ooh, elephants. Beautiful move. How many kills? 47 kills. Oh, but 10 of those are uh, friendly fire. That's not a good ratio at all. That's more than 20%. Rogi is doing a lot better this game. Yeah. <laughs> he did not get knocked off his Viking ass like last game. Let's see. Is Doubt continuing the route of the Teutonic Knight? A little bit. Camel Archers. 36 of them, 74 kills. What's the attack bonus against Spearmen? Zero. Okay. But together with some uh, defensive castles here. Rather, sorry, offensive castles. He is just snipering every single Bulgarian unit that tries to get in his way. At some point, somebody's going to have to push. True, that is a... That's right. I guess, uh, Slim, you're right. The uh, the exact composition of that 10, 20% is uh, what's important. But someone's going to have to push here. Someone's going to have to make the first move. Like uh, high school students at a dance, somebody is gonna have to uh, lean in for the kiss here. It's either gonna have to be the Teuton and the Elephant, the two ridiculously slow moving units, or it's gonna have to be the siege combo of Bohemian Sicilian, which is just re a ridiculous combo. An absolutely ridiculous combo. It looks like the Berber has been pushed back here. Bulgarian, does he have Baggains? No, he does not. Okay, so missing an incredibly important upgrade and our Spaniard moves forward So on the one hand we have the Bulgarian moving in with those mini Teutonic Knights not yet And on the other hand we've got their Spaniard converting everything. He's got Paladins Spanish Paladins are pretty damn strong Why do I have a feeling orange is just going to cut a different attack path to the left or to the right? Now it looks like the crazy bunny is eating the uh, Bohemian castle. Ufnitsa kill count. Okay, 33, so he lost a few of them. Here come the villagers! You've heard of the charge of the light brigade. This is the charge of the ridiculously light brigade. <laughs> Tell me he's supply capped or population capped. No, he's not. Why the hell is he throwing villagers away? Yeah, exactly. If those were Spanish villagers, that would be pretty damn good. Spanish villagers, though, no supremacy just yet. He's getting thumbring. Thumbring for what? You have halberdiers and paladins. Okay. Whatever it is. We'll see it. And by the way, look at the top left and top right of your screen. Aside from a few upgrades, no upgrades being researched, which means the players are all building armies, training armies. Finally, finally some uh, siege being brought by our Dravidian. I mean, come on, you're going to have to move forward with your elephants. This is a crazy death ball of elephants. 50. You're going to have to risk losing 20 of them. I'm sorry, there's no other way. There is simply no other way. Ooh, big volley misses the Teutonic Knight, who is now chasing a trade cart. Oh, 
gets a big ball to the back of the head and dies. To the east. Berber and Burgundian. Uh, still no Burgundian revolution. He, I guess, uh, why would he? He's down to 85 villagers. He's bringing gunpowder units of his own to the party. But our Bulgarian with his siege is cutting through here. Okay. So things are not looking good on the east side of the map. And an absolute stalemate. Please, somebody, we're 52 minutes into this game. Somebody push into somebody. Doubt is just basically call him doubt target practice this game for these Hafnitzas. Somebody make the first move. Come on. Somebody swipe right. Somebody. Look at this dead zone. Keep an eye on that as well. Let's see what's going on. The Spaniard is slowly... Uh, I wouldn't have had this on my bingo card. The Spaniard going trash? I mean, I, I guess they have it. Might as well use it. But okay. Why are you moving forward with a few... <gasps> the onagers are exposed. The onagers were exposed for a hot second. The elephants were doing a bit too much moving. And why are there only a few of them? <laughs> why is he only using a tenth of his army? Let's see what the speed is. No, they actually move a 10% slower than the Teutonic Knight, who moves at a massive 0 0.88. Halfnitsa 0.8. Dravidian castles, by the way, are done. I don't know why the hell he needed three Dravidian castles there. He's not training a single Urumi swordsman. There you go. Finally, finally. Keep going. Keep going. This is what you have to do. You have to power through. You have to lose half your army. There's no other way. Otherwise, they're just going to stomp, curb stomp you. Yeah, paper mache. It literally rained air, rained Hafnitze balls and it uh, disappeared. Our Bulgarian pushing in through the right. Our Spaniard trying to convert. He's converting trade carts. <laughs> well, there you go. That's something we haven't seen in Age of Empires 4v4 Rage Forest on this channel before. A Spaniard researching supremacy. Motastic must be so bored out of his mind. That he is converting trade carts. Gunpowder unit speed upgrade. Let's see. Uh... Actually, I don't know if it's uh... Wagenberg tactics. What are his? Let's see his hand cannoneers. That'll be easier for me to see. Yeah, I, I think it is. I think Wagenberg tactics has been researched. Does anyone have a Bombard Cannon that we can confirm it moves at 0 0.8 tile? 0 0.7? Yeah. So 15% faster than 0 0.7 is 0 0.8. Okay, good to know. This is just an absolute disaster here for Team North. On the West Coast. Oh, by the way, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. A path to Grandma's house. Our Berber is going to insert himself into the trade route? With two camels. Okay. <laughs> so much bonkersness. No, the Burgundian can't push the button with 70 villagers. Although I guess the, you're right. The time is running out. The problem for our Burgundian, Abdullah, he, he doesn't have a castle. Even if he wanted to push the button, he can't. He's like my 11-month-old uh, kid who tries to reach things on the counter by standing on his tippy toes, but he just can't reach it. That's what that is for the Burgundian. No more castle for him. And this is a very sad way to lose your elephants. You had a death ball. Doubt is repairing the shit out of this castle. It's got 20 elephants inside. Why are they inside? Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, the problem is that the Teutons are also missing a husbandry. So it's not like they can train uh, those scouts to run in and try to snipe the onagers. The onagers are pretty exposed, as are the Hufnitsas. The problem is you're right. The the combo of Dravidian Teuton is just way too freaking slow. It looks like our Burgundian has been knocked out. So as long as Doubt and Macro can hold this, 
their teammates on the other side of the world will win the game for them because they'll keep pushing through now into the Berber base. Oh, our Berber's trying to put up a castle, but our Spaniard catches wind of it. Down go the Berber villagers. Castle gets to a third completion. And now they're in the trade route as well. Okay, so again, as long as Doubt can hold on here and the elephants can hold on. I mean, why are you moving? There we go. There we go. Doubt finally, finally mixing in some bombards of his own. They're going after the Hafnitas. So confusing with all the rubble, the yellow color on this, on this yellow grass. Wow. So they did hold long enough. So they held this push long enough. Team South here really needed to put, like I said, somebody needed to make the first move. And because they didn't, with Purple getting knocked out, that's all she wrote. And now the Berber Castle fails to go up. Even if it went up, what could it really do? They'll just reroute the trade up here, which is exactly what they've done right now. And Doubt must be feeling pretty damn good about himself. Our Dravidian must be feeling pretty damn good about the... Look at that score, by the way. 14722. Ragi, 14721. That is that is sour. <laughs> that is that is very sour. That must uh, Ragi must be. Oh, if only I got one more kill. If only I gathered one more handful of lumber or stone or gold or whatever, I would have beat Doubt's score. But he is one point below. Let's take a look at the stats. Kill count. Okay, uh, Albert here is of course the biggest. Let's see if anyone who was the biggest slinger here. Our Dravidian giving the most to our Bulgarian. Well, there's your siege. Although their siege techs are also cheaper. Trade? Eh, non-existent, even though the game was almost an hour. Was it an hour? Yeah, an hour and one minute. Interesting. Highest kill count by our Berber? I didn't see that at all. What's the second highest kill? 398 by our Spaniard. What an... Hey, look, it's not game number two. Game number two was just way too bonkers to ever have any kind of competition. But this game was a little weird. I'm not going to lie. I really, I was, I wanted somebody to push here. Like, great, you won the game and you ended with 35 elephants. What, what's the point? It's a video game. Kill him. Throw him into the meat grinder. Our Bulgarian making himself very much at home here. Okay, well, look, any game with doubt, like I said, is always, there's always some fun nonsense. And for him to go Teutonic Knight, literally the slowest infantry unit in the game, against mass bohemian sicilian siege is just about as doubt as you can get and honestly he made it work because on the other side of the world his team conquered tile by tile the burgundian who just could not unfortunately press the button because he had no castle from which to press it and that's all she wrote everyone thank you so much for joining it's going to end it for me here i have to go i'm uh, probably going to make myself a cup of tea and uh, try to recoup my my voice. And all the new names, all the new subs, all the new people who commented and joined. Awesome to have you. Hopefully you'll uh, join us next week as well. Same, uh, same bat time, same bat channel for more fun Age of Empires. But until then, everyone have a fantastic night. Uh, although uh, some of you and my Aussie friends have a fantastic morning. Catherine, Berserker, Abdullah, John, thank you so much, everyone. Reverie, awesome. Thanks for all the cool comments. Virgilio, thanks for uh, reminding me about the timestamps. And yeah, everyone, have a fantastic night. Thanks for joining.